What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you don't know me, my name is Simone. I'm an Italian professional photo videographer. And in this video, we're gonna talk about five tips regarding lighting setup and lighting in general that would really improve your portraits. Now, some of them could be also applied when you're shooting outdoors. Yo mate, have you told them about the giveaway oh. though? Oh yeah, you're right. So I became an official global ambassador for Nanlite and to celebrate this achievement, we've launched a challenge to win some of my favorite lights. To participate in this is gonna be extremely easy because you just need to post a photo regarding the theme, which is blue. Whatever comes in your mind, blue, it's fine. And then you need to use the hashtag X Ferro 21 But all the instructions and how to win, I'll leave uh, the link in the description of my Instagram post. So check it out. All right, without further ado, let's go on set. We have here Manu. Thank you very much, Manu, for being on the channel. I'm gonna leave his Instagram down below in the description. So check him out. And let's start with the first one, which is about split toning. So whenever you're in studio and you'll be able to control the lighting, split toning is about having two different colors on two different opposite sides. And this could be also black and white. And how you achieve a split toning effect is just having two different lights on opposite way and choosing bright colors. For example, right now I'm just using a yellow color. So this is 2700 Kelvin. And then this one, we can use it as an opposite color and maybe we can put it blue. Why we choose these two colors is because if we look at the color wheel, we understand that these are on the opposite sides or probably you heard about teal and orange. So you can have a look at this wheel and try to play around with the colors. It is really important in photography that we have a contrast in our, in our photos. So whether you use different colors or you're just using a key light and maybe nothing else on the other side, it is important to understand how you're using contrast in your photos. So right now I'm just gonna turn off this key light right here. There you go. And now I want to show you the effect that we have in camera. So whenever we do this plate toning, here is what we get this part because there is the yellow of this light that is just right there and then on the other side we have that blue that is touching upon uh, this area so we shoot a photo and this is the result that we get now we can obviously move these around but the split toning is literally just try to do half half and as i mentioned before we can try to do the same effect just using a key light so in this case we turn these off we turn back on the key light and then we are going to position the key light right on the side of our subject. There you go. And in this case, the contrast is achieved by having a very bright side on this way and a very dark side on the other way. So if we go and snap a photo and the, and the camera, then this is the effect that we get. So this is another type of split toning. Now let's go with the second tip. And this is about the 45 angle degrees that I always mention in my TikTok, in my Instagram, and all the time when I do portraits because it's actually the most used one and the one that is gonna guarantee you a great result when talking about portraits. So what we do in this case, we just position the light 45 degrees towards our subject. There you go. This is kind of like so, depending whether you want more contrast or less contrast, you can move it a little bit more towards the face. So if we move the light towards the subject, then we are reducing the difference between this part and this part and therefore less contrast. But if we want to make it more dramatic, then we just need to move the light a little bit more on the side. But let's keep it a little bit neutral. Let's say 45 degrees like so. Having the 45 degrees will help reduce the shadows that we have on the eyes, on the nose, and on the lips as well. Whereas if we have it completely on his eye level, the face is gonna look flat because we're not gonna have much shadows. So we can call this Remembrant lighting because the goal is having a triangle, let's say on the darker side of his face, just right here. So we go from the nose, a little bit on the outside, and then we go on the inside. So this is what we want. There is a bright side, darker side, with a triangle of light in the darker area. So if we snap a photo, even in this case, there you go. And this is what we got. The third tip that is about lighting is that you should try to catch the eye light. The eye light is basically the reflection that you see on his eyes of the key light. And this is extremely important because it really helps the viewer being focused on his eyes because when we're talking about portrait, the subject are always eyes. And when we have that reflection in his eyes, they will pop. The fourth tip that we're talking about is using a backlight. And this is absolutely key because it adds depth to the picture. You can do it outside as well. Just having the sun right 
behind the subject. And doing this will create a very nice glow around the subject. But if we are in studio, we're just using a different light. And in this case, we have a non light mix, but 227C, and we can use any color that we want. To contrast the white light that we have in the key light, I'm gonna use in this case, a yellow light. So let me set it up, there you go. And in this case, I can move it around and make it more or less intense depending on the effect that I want to achieve. The concept is that the light is 45 degrees towards the subject and then right on the opposite side, I have the backlight. In this case, it's yellow and I'm gonna hit this part. And if we have a look at the camera, the effect is beautiful. There we go. And then you can see the difference from with and without the key light. And this is a massive difference because it really separates the subject from the background. Now, if we wanna play with the backlight, we can. We can use whatever color we want. I like the yellow because again, it contrasts with the white. So it's totally up to you, you can play around. And also you can play around with the position of the backlight. Maybe you wanna have more back or more on the side. And then the last tip that I wanna talk about in this video is not having too bright or too dark points unintentionally in our photos. This means that if I do this right now with my light and the light is too close, we're gonna have a look at the camera, what happens, but what happens is that it's basically too bright. So we can fix this a little bit in post, but especially if you're in studio, it's always better to control the lighting and not having any burn point or not having any too dark point unless we want it. If I wanna create this black background effect, it's totally fine that this area is completely dark, but do it intentionally. So always check out that the light is okay and your settings on the camera are okay. Even in this case, it's fine, but if I mess up with the, with the settings like so, then in this case, the photo is completely burned and it's not gonna look great in the photo. Plus what you can do is that when you are in post, you can decrease the highlights or increase the shadows in order to achieve that balance. At the same time, when we are taking a portrait, but we are outside, we need to be very careful not having the sun directly hit in the subject and having some bright spot that are completely white. So we don't have any information. It's just not pleasant to the eye looking at portraits that are completely burned. So when you are outside, the best way, unless you're on sunset or sunrise, which are different options where the light is much softer, it is always better to stay in the shadow. So even if the sun is extremely bright, you can stay in the shadow and therefore you're gonna be able to control your settings and to having a, a much smoother shadows in your subject. But if you want to know more about how to get the perfect portrait in studio, you should definitely check out this video right here that is gonna help you a lot. Thank you very much, Manu, for being here. Don't forget to leave it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Ciao.